Hey guys, this is my first ever video type message. <clears throat> and before I say anything, I just want you to know that you are loved. You are loved. And I'm talking true love. And that true love comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all of us. And, uh,. I'll tell you what, I'll just get right into it. My mother was on my head about this type thing. Saying Jesus is real and Jesus is watching. And please stop sinning, son. Because sinners don't belong in the gates of heaven. And I said, yeah, I know, Mom. I know, Mom. I'm a, I'm a good guy. You know, if I got an extra couple dollars, I give to this homeless man. and You know, or, or I, you know help an old lady cross the street so to speak I'm a good guy that will never get you into the gates of heaven and you know what I was a good guy and I am a good guy but I was so corrupted I mean if you if you know me you knew that I was a total drug addict and I stayed in the shadows for a reason <laughs> because I was ashamed of who I had become because I wasn't me. I was so addicted. <clears throat> I was so lost. And one night in 2017, everything just hit the fan. I uh, took some Zannies, some perks, and drank with them. But then uh, I decided to take a whole bunch of acid, too. And I'll tell you what. That was the scariest night of my life. Because, you know, it's, the devil knew who I was. And I was on his play, playground, so to speak. So he tormented me and tormented me during this trip, right? But then, I think when all the drugs settled, you know, I took a lot, you know, uh, I took a lot. And I just passed out. I passed out on a, on the kitchen floor. And when I was on the ground, I was looking up and onto the ceiling, and then all of a sudden I saw flashes of my life living that type of lifestyle and you know I wanted to be I still want to be a music producer a rapper actor you know but it was all for me none of it was for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it was to put myself on a pedestal because I really thought I was a supreme being you know God has gave God has given me a lot of gifts that Due to the drugs, I was never able to share, show anybody. But I saw that one day I would be very rich. I'd be renowned. Uh, a lot of cars, money, clothes, girls. What, we, what our society kind of looks at as success. What we kind of look forward to as success. And what, would we th what we think would make us happy. And in this little mini vision that I had, I was so sad inside. Sad. <clears throat> there was nothing there. I was empty. It's like I sold my soul. But then after that little vision, all of a sudden I just, I'm not sure if I died, but I know that I was so close to death. It was definitely calling my name. And uh, I had to have died because all of a sudden I was transported to the spirit realm and I was in hell. And, yeah, you know, I, I always knew that hell would be a terrible place. You know, like I said, my mom was a Christian. She's always preaching this stuff to me and my homies. But when I was there, it was... 
everything. That was bad. Everything. To the feeling of anxiety, depression, everything that weighs on your heart, that the oppression of the devil ramped up to a billion. The air is not oxygen, it's like sulfur. You can't breathe. The, the heat, the heat in there are, is just so, so, so bad that your skin is literally melting, but it's not melting, so that way it can continue to melt. And the worst part for me was the ceremony. You know, it was, it was insane. I uh, was on a stick, so to speak, you know, I'm not sure, but it was like a stick. And uh, there was chains all around my body. My whole body was contorted. And I'm talking, my arms were bent behind me all the way up, but backwards. My legs were so contorted that my heels were over my eyes, over my, my eyebrows, my heels. And I was being lowered into the pit of hell and I heard the devil say, welcome home. And it's not only torment physically, it's here. Everything that you could have done in your life that would have changed this outcome. Because whether you believe in Jesus or not, whether you believe this hell and heaven stuff is real, it is. And you will be reminded of that. Like I was. So I was, and it was so much torment in my mind. And as I was being lowered and lowered into the pit of hell, I saw a whole bunch of faces, a whole lot of faces. Some I knew, but there were so many that I had no idea who they were. But I knew that God will bring those people in my life to proclaim his name, to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. But since I was in hell, I would have never had that opportunity to do so because I was there for eternity along with them. So that was even more torment for me. You know, half of them were trying to latch on to me to pull them out of the fire. The other half was trying to eat me alive. Anyway, I got really close to the fire and all of a sudden the chain snapped. And... When the chain snapped, my body contorted right back into shape. and But I didn't feel any pain. It was just like, it was so quick that I just, I was almost, in, I was in shock. And the only thing I remember from this particular moment that was truly, truly painful was when my thumb, my right thumb, hit the fire. <laughs> it hit the fire and it was like, I don't know if you've ever played with fire before, but... Uh, that heat just times a million. Everything in hell, everything in the spirit realm is amplified to a million. It's so much more real than this, than this realm, than this earth. You know, which is hard to understand. I, I totally get it. I was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to understand. Like, I heard, I had someone tell me that it's subjective. It's my own interpretation of what the drug did. But, if you were there, and you saw how real it was, if you felt it, if you knew everything in here, and in here, it's the <clears throat> it's the realest place. It's, it's the spirit realm is so much more real. And uh, so anyway, the the thumb hit the fire, and all of a sudden I'm. I turn like I like my body just turns and I'm like levitating in hell and it's like the weirdest thing but there was just this little little tiny dot of light and I just happened to blink as soon as I blinked I was in heaven but because of my evil deeds and everything that I was doing against God how many times he's warned me through my mother through other people I wasn't worthy to see heaven or Jesus. I was just in the, in, a, in this room. And <clears throat> it's like a 
it's like the light is not like that light up there. It's not like that light over there. It's it's totally in you and through you, like oxygen to us here on Earth. It's like oxygen. You know, you're of it, you're in it, you're around it, but it's just like natural. It's like it's so bright, but it's not like the sun bright, you know, it's just like you're bright. The room is like everything is bright. It's just crazy. <clears throat> but like I said, all I could see was the light and it was around me and it was in me, through me. And then I heard God say, choose. Immediately I said, Lord, I choose you. And that's when I woke back up and I was getting arrested by six or seven police officers. <clears throat> A gun's drawn. They said, well, you're lucky we didn't kill you, boy. And, uh, you know, what, what basically happened was when my spirit left my body, this is my interpretation. I guess you can call this subjective. But I'll tell you one thing that is objective, and that is the truth, and that's Jesus Christ. But my interpretation of what happened was my spirit left my body. So my spirit was in the eternal realm. But my body was so gacked out on drugs. It was so full of the devil's tools. Let's just put it that way. That it just jerked back up and started acting crazy without me being there. People apparently called the police, which they had every right to. I was acting insane. Uh, <clears throat> and... The police showed up and immediately drew their guns. And again, they had every right to because I was acting absolutely insane. And, you know, but all of a sudden, apparently, some witnesses say that I <clears throat> charged after the police. I charged at them while their guns are drawn. I mean, you know what that equals out to. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, I think that was the moment that I said, God, I choose you. I choose you, Lord. And the police spoke with my mother. They said they couldn't understand, but something told them not to shoot. So they did it. They arrested me. They arrested me pretty uh, aggressively, but it's all good. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all good. Like me charging at them and just acting insane in the neighborhood and just that's that's beside the point, you know. <clears throat> so they put me in the, the, the ambulance and I do remember looking up at the, the paramedic and I said, Please turn to God. Please turn to God. Please don't go where I've just seen. And then the cocktail hit me <laughs> and I was passed out. Till the next morning. And then I uh, woke up in the hospital bed. I don't know. I don't know what time, but the cuffs the cuffs were still on me on the on the hospital bed, and it was so tight. It was like extreme tight. Like I don't know what I was doing, but it was like super tight. So I thought that there was some like uh, nerve damage to my right thumb because I was like I was like doc please take these cuffs off, brother. Like, I can't, I can't feel my right thumb. They did some nerve damage last night, bro. And he's like, <clears throat> he's like, okay, yeah, you seem like a cool guy, so I'll, I'll take that off for you. So he got the police officer to come in and, and take it off. And the police officer was like, you have a good day, brother. You know, and I was just like, okay. You know, he's a cool guy or whatever. And the doctor came back in and he said, They've decided not to, there's no charge, like, there's nothing against you. There's no charges. There's nothing. So you're you're free to go as soon as uh, we can get a hold of your mother, and, and or she's on her way, actually. So as soon as she gets here, you're free to go. <clears throat> so I was like, wow, that's crazy. Like, I was just, you know, 
I was I guess I could have been charged with assault. You know, I could have been charged with uh what's it called? Uh drug possession, you know, and some other things too that I just that I just could have been charged for. And uh that didn't happen. I was let off scot free. Now that that's a miracle. That's a miracle in itself. But uh as soon as I got out, you know, my, my mom picked me up. She's livid. She's like, see, this is what I told you, this and that, whatever. <clears throat> and I was like, that was the craziest trip of my life. I will never, ever take acid or anything like that ever again because that was insane. <clears throat> and then, you know, a couple of days went by and <clears throat> there was a lot of bad things that I did that night. And so... A lot of it I, I didn't remember and I still don't, but I know that just by talking with the people that I was with that I was not Elijah. Like, I, I don't know what happened, but... <clears throat> so what I was trying to do was figure out how to make reparations for that, how to, how to ask for forgiveness and apologize. But I was just, I was just going through it. Like, I just couldn't decide what, what that was. Now keep in mind, this for three months I thought that that, that was a, a, a acid trip. <clears throat> I really thought that the drug did that to me, and you know, rightfully so. You know, if you're you're a lost soul and and you don't understand the spiritual realm, which which I didn't, you would think that. But uh. My numb, my, my, my thumb was still numb. It was still numb during that whole three months. And I kept calling my attention, like, why is it still numb? Like, I really must have been nerve damaged. And then I kept thinking, but it hit the fire. It hit the fire of hell. And so I just, you know, I just kept going back and forth on it, back and forth. And, you know, it kind of started off as prayer, like, you know, did God, was that real? You know, it was like, Lord, was that? Are you real? Was that real? Every, you know, the whole night. But then, <clears throat> the night of uh, New Year's Eve, it was New Year's Eve, I realized, something like the Holy Spirit spoke to me for the first time in my life. And he said, yes, I saved you, son. I saved you from yourself. And that he has a calling on my life, and I have to figure it out. To draw closer to him, and he put me in that position for a reason. That's all he said. And uh, as soon as he spoke to me, <laughs> I knew that Jesus was real. I knew that he saved my life, and, and like, you know, I was totally sober that night. First of all, but. I was just, I was just in my living room and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit hit me and I just broke down crying. Lord, please forgive me. I repent. Please forgive me, Lord. I know that you have saved my life. I know that you are real. I know that you died on the cross for me. And I confess that you are my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You, I believe in you. And, you know, I was, that was like kind of my first prayer or like, like, that I truly, truly meant, you know, so it was really repetitive and like just heartfelt though. And immediately after I finished my prayer, the the feeling in my thumb came back instantly, instantly, as soon as I finished my prayer. And that's when I knew, I was like, wow, that was a spiritual encounter. Yeah, acid was involved, drugs were involved, but I think I took so much that I literally died on that kitchen floor. And if I didn't choose God in that moment, I don't think I'd be here talking to you. Because he's the one that gave me a second chance. He gives everyone a second chance. And, uh... So, what I did was called 
as many people as I could think of and tell them, turn to God because time is imminent. And, uh, you know, that's, that was that. And there was really no response or anything that I was looking for. And, uh, but I knew that God called me to a different life. He, he called me to lead a different life, to put down the drugs and alcohol and weed and everything. And I'll tell you what, his love is sufficient. But I was still a newborn baby. So I went back to the drugs and back to the weed and alcohol and, uh, not the hardcore drugs, you know, just basically weed and alcohol and, um, you know, I, I did have a couple bars here and there, but it was nothing like how I was before. I was trying to get as high as I could before death, you know, but for, for the fact that Jesus saved my life and for me to <clears throat> go back into the same pit that the, that, that Jesus brought me out of. Man, that's sad. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's a sad situation. So, I, uh, smoking weed one night and put the blunt down and I'm looking for my charger on my phone. And it was like tunnel vision of my Bible. And the only thing I heard was choose. Just like, uh, just like in the spiritual encounter or whatever. And, uh, I looked at the Bible and, you know, I just looked at it and I turned around and I picked up my, my blunt. I uh, turned on my TV and as soon as I turned on my TV, it was like the spirit of the enemy, the spirit of the devil came into my room. And this was the second most terrifying moment of my life. Like, I've, I've been through some stuff, you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to spiritual stuff, it's just, there's nothing like it. And, uh, anyway, <clears throat> I went from smiling, having a good time. You know how it is when you've got that blunt rolling and you're just ready to get high. But I, uh, went from that to, sh I was literally shivering and shaking in fear because I knew that, that the enemy was in my room. I could feel it. And his, his, his spirit don't vibe with mine. You know what I'm saying? So immediately I just I just threw the weed down and you know, I put it out and I picked up the Bible high as a kite. And I said, Lord, Lord, I know that you saved me. I know that you've warned me so many times. And I know that I just chose wrong. But God, I'm asking you to give me one last chance. One more chance, Jesus. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said Put on the armor of God and then read Psalms 91. So I did. And uh, I couldn't read. The enemy was in my head so bad that, yeah, I read the first couple uh, verses, maybe paragraphs before uh, he talks about the belt of truth. Uh, I believe it was Apostle Paul, but I'm not, I'm not for sure, I'm not sure. But, uh, he talks about the belt of truth. As soon as I said the belt of truth, I couldn't read the rest of it. The belt, like I said, I was just literally like the belt of truth. The, 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 bre the, the breast, and, and I immediately just broke down. Because the enemy was so strong in my room <clears throat> that I couldn't stand it. I literally couldn't read. And uh, I sat down on my bed and I said, God, I need you to pray for me, through me. Holy Spirit, please help. And that's exactly what happened. I, he put on the armor of God for me. And I was just astounded at the fact that the Holy Spirit was still willing to do that for me after I've sinned against him so many times. But uh, then I read Psalms 91 over my room, and as soon as I finished reading that, it's like Jesus came down and kicked the crap out of the enemy and banished him back to hell. And I just immediately saw, you know, the, the, the bottle of booze that I had right there and, and the... the 
the blood, the, the quarter of weed over there, and I was just like, what am I doing? Like, my, my, everything just changed. Like, everything that wasn't of God just was, like, highlighted in neon. Like, get it out of your room. Spiritually clean your room. So I did, and, uh, been walking in utter grace since, you know, and, uh, yeah, this went a lot longer than I expected it, but basically, uh, there's a lot of little, little nuances in this situation that I was in that people can really learn from, you know, first of all, that I needed to learn from, you know, is that God will hand you over to your sins, first of all, that's what happened to me, I was on the edge for so long that I just went overboard. He will hand you over to your sins. And the enemy is just waiting for that. He's just waiting to pounce. But he has no power over Jesus. He has no power over what the light has in store for you. You know what I'm saying? And I just know that Everything that the devil plans to use for evil, for bad, God will turn it around and use it for good. So many people in society right now that don't know love. They've never experienced it from their parents, from significant others. And love is twisted and perverted. And... Love today is sex. Love today is so twisted. But Jesus' love is true.